Hi. So this is all the stuff I wish I'd known before I actually thought about becoming a full-time photographer and actually how to do it properly because I felt there was a lot of gatekeeping on and I'm not one of those people. Um, but also I just want to shout out to uh, my special guy at the road for giving the recommendations on these mics. These are fabulous. I just got them today, so we're now testing them. I'm going to take you out of the sweetie bowl because that's literally where I've put this to make it interesting for you guys. And let's talk about it. No gatekeeping. And I'll be honest, this is going to be as blunt as you expect from me. Have a great day. Let's go. You're going to hear a lot of commotion because basically what's going on in the studio is that everyone's getting ready for a massive open day, which um, it's got nothing to do with this video, but I felt like I needed to explain the noises. <laughs> so when it comes to, in fact, why am I holding this? This is what the cool kids do. Let me put it somewhere. Hang on. What's it say? From there to there. I'm listening to Doug, my videographer, who tells me to do stuff like this. So let's talk about it. In fact, I really like holding this. I think it's what the cool kids do. Anyway gatekeeping when it comes to stuff that people need to know when they're starting out as a photographer and I've gone over this in many many videos but I feel like there is some absolute douchebag moments where I wish I had known about this before I'd even thought about it in terms of being a professional photographer people debate about this all the time is it when you earn money is it when you act professionally all sorts all I'm going to say is if you're going to be taken seriously you need to get a couple of things sorted and I've gone over this in numerous of my videos and if you are not already subscribed now is the time to do this because I give away this information freely freely and without any sort of paywall um Go hit like and then subscribe or hit subscribe and like you do you boo. But here's the thing. You actually need to understand that legally you should get yourself some insurance, get yourself some contracts, get yourself an accountant system. Because honestly, if you are not set up, being, set up being, if you're not setting your foundation great at the beginning, you are destined to fall, right? You don't just build a house on the ground. You have to build the foundations in a cliche kind of way to say this. But so many of you negate the basics and you go, oh, I, don't, I didn't have a contract. And then the client was really horrible to me. Well, that, that, that's why. That's why they're horrible. That's why they get away with it because they can. And they really, really, really enjoy the fact that they can. And I hate to say it, that you will attract clients who will do that if you do not set yourself up to be serious just the way it goes. Having an accounting system gets you to track your money. And you might go, oh, numbers are boring. They are, but numbers are what pay you. So make sure you have an accounting system. And I, as you know, in the UK, tax has gone digital, so you need to have a digital one. <laughs> um, I use QuickBooks. In my thing below, there are loads of affiliate codes and discount codes. Go use them. Knock yourself out there. I literally what I use. I don't hide anything. It is there. Go use it. Get yourself insurance. I use Policy B. You might remember I got robbed in London almost a year ago, in about the day after my birthday. And everything was sorted despite the numerous bank holidays due to coronations and funerals. <laughs> Um, that I got the money really quickly back into my bank account and was able to get back up and running within a matter of days. I will just say that a lot of people tell you that your contracts, you can work up as you go along. I recommend you get yourself a contract. And if you don't know how to get a contract, start Googling it. And this is what you've got to get used to. There is so much in photography you could get answered yourself if you bothered to Google. I never understand this mentality. And this is a hot take. So I'm going to take this out and make this. This is a hot take. The internet does not deserve to give you answers just because you post in a Facebook group. I repeat, just because you post it in a Facebook group doesn't mean you get the answers. I didn't repeat, I just changed the way it said. But go Google that stuff. Go ask Jeeves if that's still available. Go Yahoo it, go Bing, whatever it is. Go and make, go and get some autonomy over your business and start looking up stuff yourself. And if you can't, I suggest you go get a professional. Google a professional business mentor. Somebody who can actually set yourself up, Okay. Because there are people who go, I didn't know I needed a contract. What do you mean you didn't know you needed a contract? There are numerous blogs and articles about what to do to set up a business. Literally Google it. It is right there. In fact, I think even I have a blog on it and I have numerous videos on it. The other thing is knowing how you do, how your cost of business is. And you're like, I can't do that. So right from the start, write down everything you're spending. New camera. How much was that? Boom. Lenses. Boom. Rent for a studio. Boom. Electricity. Boom. Keep the number. Get into the habit of doing the number. By the way, if you are not onto Polish Pepsi, I know it's a terrible conglomerate thing, but mm. ah, terrible ASMR. You need to actually put your big girl in pants or whatever trousers you want to wear and actually start doing this groundwork. You are responsible for the prices that come out of your business and how much it costs you. So you need to make sure you know exactly what you're spending to in order to, in order to get a career out of this. And this is where we move swiftly onto the things that we don't do. One of the big things and the big fall downs you see all the time is photographers who work for exposure or the promise of paid work later on because something is a new startup. You and I know that's a load of BS, right? We know that's a load of BS. You know why that's a load of BS? Because if something is a new startup, people want the best of it to come out. And... <laughs> 
they want the best of it to come out. So they want to be in control of their marketing and the images they put out, because guess what? Images and video is what's going to sell that to the next person. So the fact that they're going, oh, I'll just use anybody who can offer it to me for free is a little worrying. The fact that they didn't allocate a budget for the very fundamental part of their marketing is worrying. Because any part of a business budget should ha- and a business plan should have marketing involved. The fact that they allocate zero should be a massive red flag too. So big, it should be covering your entire camera, you, your house, the motorway. It is a big, 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 big red flag. The promise of paid work. I have never heard any of my friends get any paid work back from work they've done for free. In fact, they get get told, "Could you do it free one more time?" Or, oh, "I'm gonna, I haven't got, we haven't got the budget for that." And then they go get another free photographer. You are spending. You are essentially working your business for free so somebody else can make money down the long term. Why would you do that? Why would you work for free so someone else can make money? Did you volunteer? Are you a volunteer business? Is that what you're about? Then therefore carry on working as a volunteer and don't ask for any money from anything ever. But your time is precious. So stop falling for the exposure thing. And I said this numerous times in my video and on my speech at the photo and video show, which I will put somewhere up here so you can listen to it all. I say some good stuff. Passionate, but good stuff. You need to stop working for free. I mean, it. I don't care what it says. Oh, I'll give you this internal. Right. There is a thing called collaboration where you work together with a makeup artist and they bring the makeup and their skills and the model brings their skills and you work together. That's slightly different. However, when a company asks you to work for them for free so that they can have, I don't know, a music festival um, or they want some headshots done for their company, <clears throat> this should not be exposure and this should be paid at a rate that works for your business, not at what's in their budget. Okay, and that brings me really good onto this point. Just because someone says you're too expensive, it doesn't mean you actually are. It means that they just don't have the budget for you and you need to actually realize that. Okay, now if you were a startup business and you decided to charge £4,000 for one headshot, I might say, okay, you are too expensive. But honestly, for the most part, it's just because they didn't budget anything. Excuse the noises that are going on. This is just people shouting in the corridors. People genuinely don't have the money and they want to pass the blame onto pass the blame onto you because somehow you're out of budget. It's really them that's out of budget. They didn't even think to investigate how much it costs. And when they tell me they've got no money allocated for something, that's a red flag because they should have stuff allocated for this, okay? Getting sucked into the gear. Honestly, now it's taken me ages to go get these road mics, and I admit I should have got them ages and ages ago, but for the time I was just working on it. And I was quite happy with what I had. But I suddenly realized that I do a lot of photo walks and stuff. And the wind noise was like through all my audio and I just hated it. So now I've got these. And um, yes, I'm very happy with these. Um, I feel quite the influencer with these and talking into these. Um, but I got these in the long term process. Like I already know and had plans for these. And I know that I'll use them a lot. But so often I see people running off to spend thousands of pounds on a camera when they can't even figure out how to get into manual or change the settings on their current camera. I'm not saying don't do it. I'm just saying, why don't you learn how to use your camera that you've got first before you get yourself into masses of debt? I don't think it's a good idea for anyone to get into debt. And I also realize what a freaking privilege it is to not get into debt for life. Um, I don't like the fact that often you'll see brands deliberately creating stuff to target younger, less experienced photographers and often telling you that you need to buy this, this and this to get ahead. You really don't. Yes, there is equipment that can really benefit you and could really, really help. But honestly, most of my portrait work is done with one or two lights. And I did a whole video on just getting a very simple lighting setup for less than £150, which I will link somewhere here. Is it the best? No. Does it work? Yes. Do I use it still? That light is still on that modifier right there. Now, the modifier is different, but the light that I use in that £150 video is still going years strong in a very busy studio still. So that gives you an idea. I don't... I love Godox. I think people go on and on about how you need to get a better brown profile and all that. And yeah, you know, if I had the bang for the buck, I probably would have got them, but I got the Godox and I'm very happy with them. Uh, this one is going to ruffle some feathers, but we're going to talk about styled shoes, particularly if you're a wedding photographer starting out. Um, I think they're kind of cute. I think they have their place, but they should only be used in advertising as them as a styled shoe. There is something significantly different between photographing a styled shoe and actually a wedding. A wedding is pretty much like event photography on steroids and you have to throw in portrait photography, crowd control and a lot more. Being able to do a styled shoe and have all the time to pretty things up and make it beautiful and not have the mother-in-law screaming at you that she wants a picture of her boutonniere and all of that. It's very different. And I see lots of people getting doing lots and lots of styled shoots. And those styled shoots do not marry up with their quality of work in their weddings. And I think that is a little bit of a warning to them. Like, 
you need to do a styled shoot, if at all, with within the style of what you already shoot. And if you're going to use it for advertising, it needs to be that style. It needs to work with your current look that you're going for. So many people take part in all these style shoots. They think they're great and they are for the best part when it comes to like, hey, but excuse me, is that, is that Polish Pepsi coming back? Here is some style shoots I did with these people. Isn't this wonderful as a sort of like a, a content creation? But do not ever, ever, ever put it forward as this is my wedding photography because it really isn't your wedding photography. It is a style shoot. You've just done an editorial shoot with loads of other people who are highly talented and stylists doing all the hard work and you are photographing it um, in a real wedding. That is very rare to have that amount of input and having that amount of beautifulness being able to and that much time, in fact, all that time. So, yeah. I think that's another thing you need to be careful of what you present to your clients as actual work, as opposed to what you've invested to build your portfolio. Um, be honest and don't hide things because you do get found out. And if not, there are absolute douchebag photographers who take great pleasure and pride in pointing this out on people's pages. And I've seen it a few times and I've seen people get very upset, but they aren't lying. They're just making sure that your audience is aware. And I don't think you want to look a fool to your audience. This is a tough one um, and one that I <laughs> I have fallen foul of many a times. Um, I will say this delicately and as professionally as I can, not everybody is your friend and some people will be your friend just so they can get ahead with you. And I think that's absolutely disgusting and atrocious. But again, this is business and we so easily blur the lines between friendship and business. And sometimes we get butt ass hurt because we think we're friends with somebody and actually it's just a business transaction. So all I'm going to say is it's nice to have friendship, but do remember when it comes down to money, a lot of people will pick money and earning over your friendship, which is pretty lame, but it's the way the world works. Not everybody. You're going to learn really quickly that Facebook groups are absolutely toxic cesspits. <laughs> Maybe not all of them, but a lot of them. There are often people who will tear your work apart and they are people who have never posted. There'll also be people who are make snide, passive aggressive comments on you. The best thing I can say about a Facebook group, if you're asking for critique, is just don't. <laughs> um, to be honest, don't. Um, if you want to be humbled as F, put it on Instagram or TikTok because people just don't hold back there. But um I Facebook is just yeah it, anyone pretty much can join a group profess to be this that and the other I I don't I'm not a massive lover of that so I'm just gonna say don't get disheartened when Norman who's never posted one picture at all rips into you because some of them really love it honestly they rip into people especially when they find out what gear they've shot with it's insane I've covered this lots your logo no one gives a crap <laughs> okay you do and maybe a client do but honestly logos go through so many trends when I first started out everyone was doing antlers and graphic and and florals and all sorts and then you know what even my logo changed in <laughs> fact we had a whole rebrand recently um all I'll say is spend more time working out your behind the scenes business like your contract and your invoices and how your client management software I highly recommend Studio Ninja we are not at all sponsored but I do use them and there is an affiliate code in my description below it's brilliant <laughs> um spend less time on the faff if you like and just get the work out there and honestly take your time to build a website I know this is like this is still a top to do definitely but use social media straight away to start putting your stuff out there and then build your website and make sure you have an amazing contact me page but your logo is the least important thing because I've seen people who spend weeks and weeks agonizing over a logo and spend five seconds talking about their contract it should be the other way around boo 100% Learning to say no. No, this is not my plus one. The camera is not the plus one. No, I will not show you a wedding for free. No, I will not do this for free. No, no, no. Learn to say it because everyone's going to assume you're going to want to do it for free. Um, and there's no shame in just saying no. You might say, oh, but I need the money. You might need the money, but you also might find out that you're spending four hours on a one hour project. You might find out that you're spending a full five days on what should have been a day project and losing out on the potential to earn money elsewhere. All I'm saying is learn to say no better than you say yes, because so many people are going to demand that you say yes to them every time. I rearranged my hack so I didn't like how it looked. <laughs> You do not need to go to every meetup, every roadshow, everything going. They are great. They're great networking. But honestly, most of the time, it's people just talking about how great they are. <laughs> and I go through a lot. And I say the same things. But there are great opportunities to go to certain ones. 
Um, and I do think for me personally, and I am completely biased because I've just spoken there, but the photo and video show is one of the greatest ones in the United Kingdom. Um, one, because it's absolutely ginormous. There's loads of different brands there. All the major brands are represented. Um, and you can just try out gear that you can't find anywhere else. And I think it's really well organized. And it is moving from Birmingham to London, then back to Birmingham, like doing this alternate thing. So it should be okay for a lot of people. I highly recommend that's the one. If you can't go to any others, you do attend that one. Also, it's free if you're a pro photographer and you register early enough. More stuff that I wish I'd known as a photographer switching from being like a hobbyist to a professional is just how much time actually goes into the business more so than the shooting and the editing, which editing is actually a larger part than of a shoot. So you do the shoot and you think that's it, then the, the editing is massive. But honestly, the planning and the, the behind the scenes that goes into that is more insane than you realize. And you spend more time being what feels like an office administrator than you do actually a photographer. And so many people aren't prepared for that. And that's why you need systems in place to help you because so many people fall just down on those basics so get yourself a client management software system which is one i use is studio ninja it tracks all my money it tracks where my clients are coming from so i can focus on my marketing it tracks so much i highly recommend you get that sorted like for real go get it there is actually a discount code or affiliate code i can't remember which one it is in my description below so definitely go check them out there are others none that i've liked personally just a thing that i have go check them out so there passive income everyone goes on about how the ability to make thousands of pounds passively is exactly what we need i'll be honest thousands of pounds doesn't happen overnight um it probably doesn't even happen for years for some people i genuinely and i mean this strongly tell you to stop listening to those type of people that tell you you can make a thousand pound in a week um with this simple hack eventually you probably could but it doesn't happen overnight um definitely get yourself some sort of way to sell prints online um that could be that you just like i have pixie set and i just have a, a gallery that people can go in and buy and it's linked up to loxley it's so easy it's autonomy it's automatic sorry i don't have to spend any time doing it and i just get the money in i regularly advertise it though the other thing is people talk about passive, uh, passive income. It's like your YouTube channel. But the thing is, you have to put the effort in to get the YouTube channel to get the um, the ads from Amazon or wherever to come in. So passive income isn't necessarily the biggest thing. And people say, sell, sell digital product. Yeah, you could sell your presets, but only people rate you as a photographer and you actually have some good grounding as a photographer. Um, and with presets do come a lot of angry people because they don't know how to fill it in and you've got to do a lot of like... <laughs> You're doing some admin on that. So I would just say there are many ways to earn passive income, but not all of them are instantly great. And as a hobbyist who steps over into professionalism, you desperately feel like you need to do that just so you've got some regular income. Honestly, it's really hard to get a good passive income. And every time the channels keep changing their ambassadors or how, keep changing how you can earn money, sometimes a money source is completely cut off. So what I'm saying is don't always believe the hype that you can make passive income. Uh, and kind of on that one, and this, this is going to annoy a lot of people. I'm sure I'm going to get hate for this. So let me just take a drink of my... <laughs> ah, terrible ASMR. Um, there are a lot of people that tell you they're a business coach and they can talk to you all about marketing. And actually what you get is a lot of fluff and not a lot of filler. And I think that is because they can get away with it. They're not held accountable for it. Um, you don't need to learn how to market from a fellow photographer. Go find a specific marketeer who can help you, someone who actually knows about business marketing. I feel like photographers who have learned along the way aren't necessarily the best people, and that includes myself. I know what works for my business at this time, at this moment, but that could change very quickly. I think you can try things out. And as a hobbyist going professional, I always thought that it would happen really quickly, and it really doesn't. Um, you have to understand who your client is and put that groundwork in. And so many people will sell you. I'm a business mentor. I'm a photographer mentor. I made so much money for my photography. And actually it turns out they just made loads of money by selling that course, not actually from their own photography, which doesn't really help you. <laughs> they are really good at selling a course on photography, marketing, but not actually running their own business uh, as a photographer, which is slightly different as a coach, maybe, but not as a photographer. So yeah, I don't recommend every single one that you can go to. And sometimes I feel like certain businesses or groups or like institutes or societies give platform to photographers who very much fall into that category of someone who can sell a good business course but can't actually sell their own photography very well or talks a good hype but doesn't really have much in it and I feel like there's a lot of people who have space in this stratosphere who can talk a lot of waffle and it's probably myself included but don't actually give a lot of information to people so I I'm just saying, <laughs> take on any course, retreat, whatever it is, uh, or seminar with a pinch of salt. Um, one of the things you'll find is that this is like a real grown-up one. 
Uh, you need to say for a rainy day. As a hobbyist going professional, sometimes we worry about the finances. And I'll be honest, there are there are months in the year that regularly photographers will know as a famine or the starvation months, um, depending on what type of photographer you are. These are the months where everything just seems to dry up with work-wise. And as the financial climate has drastically changed over the years, we are noticing these drier months are lasting longer or happening more frequently. Um, so highly recommend you get into not so much spending, but saving and perhaps looking at ways in which you could uh, make more money. One of them is through print sales. One of them is to regularly reanalyze your, if you like, your prices. But also look where you are spending money and where you could actually do better. Um, one of the things I took up was teaching and I didn't just take it up lightly. Um, it's a small income, but it also gives, opens a lot of doors for me. I, it does take a lot of investment from me in terms of time and for planning and stuff like that. But you can only teach when you are, have some credibility and accreditations. So it is, you know, you have to find ways that your photography can earn you other ways than just sitting in the studio um or not sitting in the studio you could be a photographer without a studio um and that's another thing i'm just going to drop in you don't actually need a studio to be a professional photographer at all okay so don't worry about that at all i repeat you do not need one but you need to understand how to save and future plan and that means potentially looking at getting a pension that you are saving towards which you might go oh my god i'm no one at that age but you need to look after yourself in later life and especially when you become self-employed there is so much that you you think of in the immediacy but not in the future highly recommend you look at this and that includes doing a business plan and learning about saving things and finances so i highly recommend you definitely look at future proofing yourself and getting that financial situation sorted it is not the greatest thing because when you first start a business you often feel like it's hand to mouth feeding but uh you definitely need to plan that into your future very quickly when you start up a business one thing i think we talk about quite a lot as a business person or often just as someone for themselves is our mental health and in business and this is probably the most important thing i'm going to tell you so get in close your mental health will suffer if you do not know how to keep your work-life balance and unfortunately when you go full-time into professional photography you often lose that work-life balance because you're trying so hard to make money um, and I know it's very much a privilege to say you need to take time out, but honestly, burnout will destroy your career. It will destroy your personality. It will destroy you and it will take years, weeks, whatever it is to rebuild this. So you need, I mean this, you need to understand that your mental health is very, very, very important. You will suffer from Dunning-Kruger effect, I'm sure, which if you don't know what Dunning-Kruger effect is, good luck because so many people do claim it. Um, but it's quite a funny thing. And I'll put a video somewhere here where you can find out. But the other thing that you will find out is that people also get imposter syndrome and some of the greatest and the good get imposter syndrome. So it's very true and real, but it's not actually substantiated. So I highly recommend you look after yourself and understand that you need to look after your mental health as much as your physical health. <laughs> one of the things I think is greatly overlooked is first impressions and I don't mean a case of physicality but actually just how you present yourself online and there's a huge difference between a hobbyist and a professional and I think it's all about how you conduct yourself how you present your work how you communicate with your client the interfaces that you use but then secondary part of that is actually how you look um, I'm not saying that you should change your style completely, but your style should be very in keeping with the way you are as a person online, the way you work, which your work is done. There are some great photographers I know who have this kooky style and I think it really sets into them and I think it's beautiful and I think it's wonderful um, and they should never change. But get used to being comfortable with who you are because that's what the image is going to be projected to your clients. So when you're a professional, you you are going to not be able to show up perhaps in the most creative t-shirt that you could have before. Um, you might have to clean your shoes, but um, there are certain parts that clients will expect from you. So maybe, you know, come with your cars already formatted, ready to go, come with the batteries already fully charged. Don't get there and start fully charging because it's not just about appearances, it's physicality, but it's also how you conduct yourself. So get yourself ready. If your timekeeping's a problem, you need to start to unlearn that as a problem so if you know that you struggle to get up in the morning perhaps you don't schedule any early morning shoots you schedule for a time going forward and you work a bit later or whatever it is but don't set yourself up to fail from the first start and the last bit of advice when I say going from hobby to professional there'll be a lot of people expecting you to fail I had it myself in this very studio the day that I took the keys over and I was painting this from this weird sort of tobacco yellow custard Cornish cream color to white a guy came in and told me that he gave me a week before I hated what I was doing and then a month before I closed it all down he was a little bit harsher what he said but gratefully I'm going to say now I'm nearing 10 years here and he's here and I'm still here so I think that's a testament but yeah I would 
get used to the fact that people are expecting you to fail and don't give them the satisfaction. But also if you decide that being a full-time professional photographer is not for you, there's no shame in that. You don't have to announce the world that you're not doing it. You can also size it up. And I'll give you a hint. A lot of full-time professional photographers online actually have side hustle jobs. So yeah, we just don't always share it. So don't be ashamed. You do goo. As ever, don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that bell button, and I'll see you all real soon. Bye.